Welcome to this Wiseall tutorial. In this short video we're going to teach you a little bit about how to use the case statement in Microsoft SQL Server. So in this session we'll look at what case statements are useful in SQL Server queries. We'll then move on to working with three different examples, one to do with numbers, one with text and one with dates. So let's get started. In a SQL Server query, you use a case statement to test different conditions and then return different answers based on whether those conditions have been met. It's kind of like an if function in Excel or a set of nested if functions or maybe even a VLOOKUP function if you've encountered those. So in this example, we're going to categorize our films by their running time in minutes. So we'll create a description that will be short, medium or long based on their running time. So to start with, I need to add a new calculator column to my query, to my select list. So I start by adding a comma and the word case. Now my case statement is going to span multiple lines. And at the end of my case statement, I need the word end. So I might as well fill that in right now. Then I'm going to head back up inside in between the case and end lines. And this is where I can start testing my conditions. Each test begins with the word when. And then you have to perform any sort of logical test. So similar things to the things you'd add in a WHERE clause. So here I'm going to test where the film runtime minutes is less than or equal to 90. So that's the first logical test. On the same line, I'm going to write in what I want to happen if that condition is met. So if I, I find that the film is less than 90 minutes, then I want to provide the description of short. And to begin with, that's all you need for a simple case statement. You can test one condition and give one answer if that condition is met. If I execute this query, I'll find that most of my films return the word null. But hopefully you can see down here, the film that is exactly 90 minutes long provides me with the answer short. And if I scroll down a little bit further, I should find a couple more in the database. There we go. The nice thing about case statements, even though they look a little bit complex to begin with, is that to add further conditions is really, really straightforward. I'm going to cheat slightly by copying this entire line. And after copying it, I can simply paste it in a couple more times. Then all I need to do is tweak the numbers that I'm testing for. So I'm going to test for less than or equal to 150 minutes. That will be a medium film and then less than or equal to 180 minutes. That's going to be a long film. And then I'd also like to take into account anything else. So any running times that are longer than 180 minutes, I'd like those to be handled with this short else statement. And those will be, those will be called epic films. So you can see, even though it's quite long and complex, there's a lot of consistency in the way you write your conditions, which is quite nice. So if I execute this query one more time, I should get a description for every single film that has a running time in minutes value. And there we go. Now, although a case statement looks quite long and complex in comparison to some of the other basic calculations you might have performed, it really is just a single calculator column. And I can treat it in exactly the same way as other calculator columns. So for instance, if I wanted to give it an alias, you always add the alias at the end of the calculation. So I can do that in exactly the same way for my case statement. Add an as film duration. And if I execute the query, it provides me with a neat alias, a neat title for the column. If I wanted to add any further columns to my select list, then that's exactly the same again. If I add enter and a new comma, I can bring in any other field from the tables, or I can create a new calculator column if I need to. But this entire set of block of text between the word case and now my alias is just one single column. So that's one thing that you have to remember. I think probably the biggest annoying thing about case statements is if you want to use the answer the case statement provides in a WHERE clause. If I just temporarily remove my results pane, press Ctrl and R to do that. If I wanted to ask to show me all the films where the, where the duration is, is medium, then I can't simply use my alias, because we know we can't use an alias in a WHERE clause. So what I have to do is ask where 
my entire case statement, so I can simply copy this, where my case statement is equal to medium. If I execute this query now, that will give me all of the medium films. Of course, I could have just asked for all the films that were between 90 and 150 minutes long. That might have been a more simple WHERE clause to create. But it's worthwhile knowing that you can use a case statement in a WHERE clause as well, even though it looks a little bit messy. Just to give you an idea of some of the other things you can do with a case statement, I'd like to give you a couple of extra examples. So here's one involving uh, searching for text. I'm going to get my case statement to identify whether a particular film has a particular phrase or word in its title. And I can do that by using the like operator. I'm going to use some wildcard characters as well. I'm going to use the percentage symbol to try to identify films where the word twilight is anywhere in the film title. My then part of my, my logical test can provide a simple description of that film. That's a fairly fair and accurate description, I think. I might as well make sure that all my other films aren't tarred with the same brush, so I'm going to use an else part of my case statement. I'm going to say when it doesn't contain the word twilight, it's simply uh, probably not bad. And if I simply execute that query, most of my films will be probably not bad. When I find the Twilight films, they are indeed just awful. So there you go. You can use the like operator and any text matches in a case statement as well. You can also use case statements to test for date and time information. So in this example, I'm going to test whether my films were released in the talky era or the silent movie era. Now, according to Wikipedia, the first si the first non-silent film, the first talkie, was released in October 1927, and it was called The Jazz Singer. So I can test when the film release date is less than 1927-10-01, then it's in the silent era, else it's in the talkie era, let's call it. And there we go. If I execute this query, I'll get my results. So we've seen case statements involving numbers, we've seen case statements involving text, and now case statements involving dates. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.